Morton Cannon's Monsters of the Multiverse introduces a brand new fairy origin for the Hobgoblin that has an awesome help action racial trait. Inspired by this, I'm giving you a build that will help you take advantage of this new trait as well as tie the Hobgoblin back into its traditional martial focused depictions. Hey everyone, welcome to Dungeoneers Pack, this is Josh and thank you for watching. Before jumping into the build, here are some things to keep in mind. I'm going to focus on levels 1 to 10 as most campaigns are played in this level range. And builds on this channel are built with a focus on the concept, but they also will be viable for combat and roleplay. With this build, there are three goals I'm trying to achieve. First is to showcase the power of the new Hobgoblin's Fae Gift racial trait. The second is to show how we can flavor the new Fae Origin Hobgoblin as its traditional depicted version. And the last goal is to have you feel like a master tactician on the battlefield, with plenty of options that will benefit your teammates but won't gum up your action economy. For the ability scores, prioritize dexterity to support our armor class, initiative, and damage output. The plan is to take a ranged approach so we can oversee the battlefield, so dexterity is key to being able to make decisions and direct the flow of combat before enemies have a chance to act. Next, prioritize constant for a healthy amount of hit points. Then choose Wisdom, which will boost our character's perceptiveness on and off the battlefield. Follow that up with Charisma to represent this Hobgoblin's ability to take charge when necessary, followed by Intelligence, and Strength will be our dump stat. As already stated for our race, we're using the brand new Hobgoblin from Monsters of the Multiverse. This new Hobgoblin allows us to place a plus two into one ability score and plus one into another. Fate Ancestry is a new feature for the Hobgoblin that shares the same name with other Fate Origin based races in the player's handbook, but it is tweaked. We have advantage against being charmed, despite the the Fae Association, we can flavor this as mental training instead of a magical gift. Not only has this character trained their body, they have learned to keep their mind clear and sharp. Fae Gift is a key feature for this build that is one part of a two-part combo, providing us additional benefits for helping our teammates on and off the battlefield. We have the ability to use the help action as a bonus action for a limited number of times per long rest, but this restriction won't matter in the long run, we'll get to that in a bit. We can flavor the additional help benefits once we hit level 3 as commands instead of being a result of Fae Magic. Hospitality could be a morale boosting like effect. Passage is us having an ally charge into or escape from combat, and Spite is directing our ally to hit a weak spot on the enemy. The last trait is Fortune from the Many, which is the Hobgoblin being bolstered by its allies, able to overcome a challenge with the power of friendship. For the background, I went with Soldier, picking up the athletics and intimidation skills and proficiency with land vehicles. This background ties our character to the militaristic faction of goblins. Maybe they were part of their clan's infiltration group or part of a large warband of various monstrous races. Either way, this hobgoblin was trained in the art of war, believing that might makes right. Let's get into a level by level breakdown. Starting at level 1, we are starting off with the rogue class. Along with the class proficiencies, we pick up perception, acrobatics, stealth, and the sleight of hand skills. All these skills are a further reflection of our martial training. Acrobatics is our physical capabilities, perception reflects the ability to read the battlefield for threats, and stealth and sleight of hand represents our ability to commit subterfuge. Adding power to our skills is expertise and I chose stealth and thieves tools so that mechanically this character is still very much the group's rogue. We also gain sneak attack for that nice spike in damage with our attacks, and the last feature we pick up is the ability to speak thieves camp which could be flavored as a goblinoid war code. With level 2 we gain the cunning action feature which allows us to use our bonus action to dash, disengage, or hide. At level 3 we choose our roguish archetype and we are going with Mastermind. This subclass grants us proficiency with a disguise kit, a forgery kit, a gaming set of our choice, and two additional languages with the Master of Intrigue feature, but more importantly, we gain the Master of Tactics feature, which is the second half of our help action combo. Master of Tactics allows us to use the help action as a bonus action like Fey Gift, but with no limited use. In addition to this, we can use the help action to provide an ally advantage on an attack from 30 feet away. Starting at third level, we can apply the traits from Fey Gift anytime we use the help action action, meaning while in combat as a bonus action every turn, one of our allies is getting advantage on their attack and one of the bonuses provided by Fae Gift, all from a distance. This combo truly epitomizes a supportive battlefield tactician commanding troops to turn the tide of battle. Next at level 4 we have the option between an ability score increase or a feat, and I went with the ability score increase opting to boost dexterity to increase our damage per round and our initiative. For level 5 we gain uncanny dodge which will allow us to use our reaction to have the damage dealt to us by an attack. With level 6 we can can choose two more skills to grant expertise to and I went with perception and intimidation. While the first time I went with the traditional roguish options, this time I went with two skills that are from our character's martial capabilities. Perception and intimidation at this point showcase this hobgoblin tactician becoming comfortable with their role in the party. When we hit level 7 we are jumping into the fighter class. We gain all weapon and armor proficiencies we didn't already have and pick up a fighting style and second wind. For the fighting style, I went with archery to boost our average damage per round and also as a way to reflect our character's preferred method in combat. At level 8 I'm sticking with the fighter and we pick up action surge which will allow us to attack twice on a single turn or get extra spicy and use our help action again which will trigger fey gifts. 
Hitting level 9, we are still going down the fighter path and are able to choose a martial archetype and I'm going with Battle Master to obtain Student of War and more importantly, combat superiority for some maneuvers to further grant us tactical options in combat. Student of War grants us proficiency with an artisan's tool of our choice, which at this point will have us rivaling an artificer. Combat superiority will let us choose 3 maneuvers and give us 4d8 superiority die to fuel them. I went with Distracting Strike to give an ally advantage on the next attack made on the target we hit, Maneuvering Attack to move our allies into or out of combat, and Trip Attack to potentially drop an enemy prone so that our melee allies can wail on them with advantage before they stand back up. The great thing about all these options is that they don't use your bonus action, and instead can be used when just taking the attack action. And finally for level 10, we finish this build off with another level in the fighter to pick up an ability score increase or a feat, and I went with a feat choosing Sharpshooter to add more power behind our single attack. The archery fighting style comes into play helping to mitigate the hit to our accuracy for the extra damage provided by the feat. Now let's take a look at our pros and cons. For our pros, with the number of tools and our expertise in stealth and perception, we are an amazing scout and dungeoneer for the party. There's no trap we can't find and disarm or no door we can't unlock. The last pro is that we have an incredible amount of options to benefit our teammates in combat. With a combination of the help action, bonuses, and maneuvers, we are the closest thing to a warlord in 5th edition. Now for our cons. Due to our big dip into the fighter class, our damage progression for sneak attack is stunted. This hurts our personal damage output. Even with Sharpshooter, if you're looking to roll as many damage die as possible for those big numbers, this might not be the build for you. Your strength comes with helping others succeed in their attacks. The last con is that you may not feel that this build truly encompasses the leader playstyle due to the lack of emphasis on charisma skills in favor of traditional rogue skills. The point of those choices was for you to still be able to fill your class role while still being a battlefield tactician. This is an easy fix though. On your ability scores, prioritize charisma instead of wisdom, swap out some of those rogue dungeoneers skills with social skills and pick up the inspiring leader feat and you're ready to be the party face. With that said, I want to hear from you. What kind of hobgoblin character would you build? Let me know down in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and if you want to see more content like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Alright, I'm out of here. Have a good one.